Hi, my name is Gavin Inson. I'm the senior pastor of the Active Church in Johannesburg, South Africa. And uh, yes, I'm talking to you about how do you do church in a time like this where there's lockdowns and then you open, and then you lock down and you open. You know, just <clears throat> this week before recording this particular show, there was were scenes in um, an area near near to where we are where a church met in defiance of lockdown regulations and the police came in there, shot them with rubber bullets and stun grenades and all sorts of things like that. And um, I mean, <laughs> all I can remember is the images of this old 60-something-year-old woman walking out there with blood come pouring down from her forehead. But you know, my pastor, Pastor Bert Pretorius, he, 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 he made a statement to me earlier this year and said, if you follow the vision of Jesus, um, we don't rely on the government for anything for the church to meet. And the church may be restricted, but the church is never closed. The government can't give us a, a mandate to meet or not to meet. And we've got a wrong idea of church if we believe that the only way to meet is in a large gathering. So I want you to realize that the G12 vision actually defeats that objective of the enemy because we can still gather together in groups of like up to 12 people. And even here in South Africa, you're not going to get in trouble with police if you do that. And that's actually what we're doing. That's part of how we're able to keep our church going is that we have cell groups where leaders meet with their people and they take the word of the week and they share it with those people and then they take it to their people and meet in cell groups with their people. And, and that's how you can still get the gospel out. So very important that you get a hold of that. And how does the church stay relevant in a time like this? Well, one of the things that the church needs to do here in South Africa is to keep people eating. So very important that you stay relevant. And how do you pull the community together? Because there are dark forces. There are dark forces co controlling the power of the earth that are against the church. That's, that's a reality. To, to dispute that would be futile. So looking at this, um, I want to I wanna continue where we left off last week. We spoke about the life clause. We spoke about the reasons behind the life class, and if you haven't seen that episode, I'd encourage you to go and have a look at it. We also gave you a brief timeline of the life class, <clears throat> and we spoke about the fact that right in the middle of the life class, in the fifth week of the life class, there's actually an encounter weekend. And so today I'd like to speak to you about the power of having an encounter with Jesus. And at the, at the encounter with Jesus, a person has the revelation of the cross. Now, just before I pray and before we get into this, I want to remind you <clears throat> where the encounter fits in. We, with, within the G12 vision, we're talking about the ladder of success. And the ladder of success, the first rung on that ladder is win. Uh, that's where you evangelize people to Jesus. The second rung on the ladder is consolidation. And that's a person who's given their heart to Jesus. Their signs that they've repented, repented. You see the fruit of repentance. And you now consolidate their faith. You, you teach them how to pray, how to have devotion, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, all that sort of stuff. And the, the life class is a big part of it. It, it helps a leader to, to effectively lead their people. And uh, today we're continuing with the power of the encounter. We're going to just tell you the, basically what an encounter is and what the aims of an encounter are. Let's just pray. Father, I just pray that as we share around your vision for your church together, that your hand would just be upon us, give us revelation, so that our lives may change. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, um, what is the most wonderful experience that any Christian can have? That is when they have an encounter with Jesus. I want you to think about God when He created us. He created us with a space inside of our soul, inside of our hearts, that only He can fill. The only way that that can be filled is through a relationship with Him. And having this relationship, having the joy of the Lord, is the only real secret there is to true happiness to true contentment, to true joy. Now, the perfect complement to our lives is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When you get a new believer, obviously they meet Jesus in a way when they give their lives to Jesus, when they have the fruit of repentance and all of that stuff. But when they have an encounter with Jesus, they get a revelation of the cross. They almost It's like they experience what it is like for what it was like, rather, for Jesus to die on the cross for them. And through getting a revelation of the intense suffering that Jesus went through, 
they get this flood of an experience and knowledge of just how much love God has for them. Also, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you find what Job was searching for in the book of Job. In Job chapter 23, verses 3 and 4a, it says, where Job says, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that is God. Then I might come to his seat and I would present my case before him. When we've had an encounter with Jesus and these new believers that we've got, they've had an encounter with Jesus, what we open up for them is a, a, a doorway to the throne room where they can go up to the judgment seat of the Lord and they can present their case before him. So the encounter is a three-day retreat and it's the first experience that a new believer has where, where, they, where for the first time they actually come face to face with God and they come face to face to his word. When they come face to face with God and his word and they come face to face with what Jesus did on the cross for them, then they're able to get over their past. They're, they're able to get past their past limitations and um, they receive the grace of God and they begin a new life in Christ free from the weight of sin. It's very important that our people in our churches and our ministries are able to live free from the weight of sin, but they, they have to be delivered from that. And so with that now, the objectives of the Encounter Weekend, because everything we do in the vision has a purpose. And so the Encounter Weekend is not just so that people come together and feel good. No, the Encounter Weekend is there because there are five clear objectives that we want to achieve in that. And the first is that, they, that a person would experience repentance and the assurance of salvation. So they'd come face to face with this and they'd know this sin. They'd see what Jesus did for them. They'd see the incredible lengths that the Lord went through for them in order for them to be freed from that sin. And that they'd know when they walk out of there that they'd be assured deep down in their heart and their spirit that they're saved. And then the second objective is that every single person that come, you understand they come to that encounter with wounds. And that through their experience and through the blood of Jesus being applied to their lives, that they would receive inner healing. There are some inner wounds which cause spiritual infections deep in the hearts and the souls and the spirits of people. Nothing that you do can heal those wounds. Nothing can take that spiritual infection away except the blood of Jesus. And, and when they have an encounter and they, they experience a revelation of the cross, that's when they get to a place where they can, they can receive inner healing. And then also that they can be set free of the chains that hold them to the past. The chains are holding them back. Deliverance. Delivered from the power of the enemy. Chains are broken. They also learn how to avoid future chains. And then the fourth aim is that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will come on, on them in power and in might. And then the last aim is that they would receive vision. And that they would see the G12 vision. Now, if, you, if you're interested, because really the life class is a most powerful tool for helping to consolidate people's faith, then I would encourage you to email us at g12 at theactivechurch.org. That's g12 at theactivechurch.org. Because we can help you with setting up the vision in your church. In some ways, for some people, it's a very different way of doing things, but it's one that the authorities can't stop. And so I'd really encourage you to look into this. And um, see the blessing of God be able to flourish in your church in spite of what's going on in the world. It's a new day. People keep talking about a new normal. And while I personally don't like this new normal talk, we just adjust. We go with the flow and we move without unnecessarily being arrested and thrown in jail. We don't have to be thrown in jail for a church meeting. Right? We can gather without getting ourselves arrested. And this is what I want to encourage you. If you want to know more about how to, how to follow this way of doing things, please send us an email and we'd be glad to assist. Let's just close in prayer. Father, I just come before you. I thank you and praise you for every ministry that is represented by every viewer of this program. May you take them from strength to strength and from glory to glory. May you overwhelm them with your love and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you next time.